Hello. Today I'm going to read Be Nice to Spiders by Margaret Lloyd Graham. One morning, as the keeper of the zoo was about to unlock the gate, he noticed something on the steps. It was a matchbox with a note that read, Please look after Helen. I've had her since she was a baby, but I can't keep her anymore. We have to move to an apartment that won't take pets. Thanks, Billy. The keeper opened the matchbox and out jumped Helen. Great Scott, he said, a spider. He tried to catch her, but Helen was too fast for him. She had eight legs and moved like lightning. Helen ran up a big maple tree. Then she quickly spun a long silk thread and lowered herself into the ventilator of the big building. It was the lion house. There was a big old lion in one cage and a mother lion and her cubs in another. There were also lots of flies. They were buzzing in the lion's ears and crawling on their noses. The lions were annoyed, but Helen was delighted. She loved to eat flies. Right away she set to work to catch them. She began by spinning a web with her silk thread. First Helen spun the outside threads, then she dropped straight down. Next she spun a lots of threads from the center to the outside. Then she spun a little spiral in the middle. Finally, she spun a big spiral. This part of the web was very sticky. When Helen had finished, she sat in the center and waited. One by one, the flies got caught in a sticky part of the web, and one by one, Helen ate them. A week went by. Helen kept catching and eating flies until there were no more flies in the lion house. She had caught and eaten all of them. Now the big old lion snoozed peacefully all day long. The mother lion licked her cubs and purred, and Helen was fat and satisfied. Next, Helen moved to the elephant house. There were lots of flies there too, and elephants don't like flies any better than lions do. In a week, Helen had caught all the flies in the elephant house. The mother elephant and her baby were happy and could once again enjoy a bath. Then Helen moved to the zebra house. Flies were crawling all over the zebras and driving them wild. As soon as Helen had caught all the flies there, the zebras were able to eat their hay in peace. Helen went from one building to another, spinning webs and eating up all the flies. The zoo became a peaceful place. All the animals were happy and contented. As for Helen, she was happy and contented too. It was a spider's paradise. One morning the keeper blew his whistle three times. All the men came out and the animals looked up to see what was going on. Boys, the keeper, the mayor is coming to inspect the zoo this afternoon at four. The animals look fine, but the cages sure need cleaning up. And don't forget to get rid of all those spider webs. But Chief, said his assistant, scratching his head, I thought spiders were supposed to be sort of useful. Joe, said the keeper, those webs make the place look a mess. Okay, boys, get busy. Men started sweeping the cages. Then they hosed and scrubbed them down. When they were cleaning the camel house, one of the men saw Helen. Quick, give me a broom, he shouted. He took a big swing at it, but Helen had disappeared. The zoo was clean and shining when the mayor arrived. Excellent, he said. I'm delighted. I've never seen the place so neat and the animals looking so well. Meanwhile, Helen was still in the camel house, hiding in a crack in the ceiling. As the days went by, she grew very hungry, but she didn't dare come out. The flies began coming back, and the camels were irritated again. At last, Helen became so hungry she couldn't stand it anymore. That night, when no one was around, she started spinning another web. 
and then on Helen stayed in the camel house, catching flies, but she didn't dare go anywhere else, which was lucky for the camel. They were happy and contented again. But everywhere else in the zoo was a different story. It didn't take long for the flies to come back and bother all the other animals. The keeper went from cage to cage. I can't understand it, Joe, he said. When the mare was here, the animals were in such good shape. Now look at it. You're right, Chief, said Joe. They look miserable. The last stop was the camel house. Why, the camels seem fine, said the keeper. And there don't seem to be any flies in here, said Joe. They both looked around carefully. Look, Chief, Joe shouted. Now I know what's going on. See that spider up there? It's eating all the flies. That's why the camels look so good. Spiders are useful. That's what I tried to tell you the other day. Of course, said Joe, said the keeper. I should have known all along. Let's call them in. He blew his whistle and the men came running. Boys, he said, Joe has made a great discovery. Spiders are good for the zoo. They keep the flies from bothering the animals. They help us do our job. So from now on, here's a new rule. Be nice to spiders. So the zoo became famous for his happy, healthy animals, and Helen was treated like a queen. One day, Helen's picture appeared on the front page of the paper. The headline ran, Local Zoo Named Best of the Year. Three cheers for spiders, says the keeper. That evening, the father of the little boy who had left Helen at the zoo said, Billy, look at this. Hey, it's my spider, Billy, shouted. It's Helen. Well, well, said his father. Instead of the zoo taking care of Helen, Helen seems to be taking care of the zoo. The next morning, Billy ran to the zoo. I'm Billy, he said to the keeper. I'm the one who brought you that spider. Hey, look, she made an egg sack. I bet there'll be plenty of baby spiders soon. And Billy was right. A few days later, out of the sack came lots of little spiders. From then on, Helen and her children and all the animals in the zoo lived happily ever after. The end.